Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Now we are going to talk a little bit about string slicing combined with for loops. We're going to cover the basics of how you can use loop variables as the indices for string slicing. So let's get started. In this case, our first example or first problem is to get all slices of length two, so they are made of two characters, made with consecutive characters. We want to get all possible slices of the string hello world, of this string that we have right here, stored in the variable message. Right here we have a breakdown of the indices of the string, so you can have a visual reference of the index that corresponds to each character. And here we can see the expected output. Of course, each one of them would be on a separate line. But basically what we want to get is this lies, then this lies, this lies, this lies, this lies, this lies, and so on. We want to print all slices of length 2 that are made with consecutive characters, including the comma, the space, and the exclamation mark. So how can we start analyzing this problem? If you see this problem or if you're asked to solve this problem, how can you initially address it? How can you analyze it initially? You have to find a pattern. What is the pattern right here? Well, we have to get slices of length 2. That is something that we can use to start working with the slices. And then you have to analyze the pattern of the indices. When we get HE, we have the indices 0, 1. Then when we get the next slice, which is EL, indices are incremented by 1, both indices. They are incremented to 1 and 2. Then, to get the third slice, again, the indices are incremented by 1, 2, and 3, and so on, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, 5 and 6, 6 and 7, and so on, until we reach indices 11 and 12. Great, so we can work with them. And what is the best way to avoid code repetition and to write efficient programs? Well, we can use a for loop to generate these slices. What do we write as the parameter for range in this case? We are naming the loop variable i because we are going to use it as an index. And typically, when we have a loop variable that is going to work or serve as an index, we name it either i or j. The parameter of range is going to determine how many iterations of the loop will be performed and the values that the variable i is going to take. How many iterations do we need? How many repetitions of the code do we need? Well, if you analyze these slices, you can find a pattern. We get one slice per character in the string because every character in the string has a subsequent character except the last one, okay? The only character that doesn't have a subsequent or a consecutive character is the last one in the string. So we can try to iterate over the length of the string. Let's see how this works. We are going to run this loop once for every character in the string. That is what we do when we pass the length of the string as the parameter for range. And then, within the body of the loop, we are going to print the slice. But how do we get the slice? How do we specify the parameters that we need? The sequence returned by range from this expression is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on until we reach the length of the message minus 1, the length of the string minus 1. It starts from 0, it is incremented by 1, and then it continues until it reaches the length of the string minus 1. In this case, the string has 13 characters. So the length of the string minus 1 will be 12. Those are the values that the variable i is going to take. i is going to have the value 0 for the first iteration, 1 for the second iteration, 2 for the third iteration, and so on. So we can use it, we can use the value of i as our start parameter. In the first iteration, the value of i will be 0. Let me illustrate this right here. In the first iteration, the value of i is going to be 0, right? Let's separate this. So the start parameter of the slice is going to be 0. 
Then on the second iteration, the value will be updated to one. And that is exactly what we needed to start the second slice at index one. Then it will be updated to two. And that is what we needed to get this slice. Three to get the next slice, four and so on. So we are getting the value of the start parameter that we need like this, and we can use it to get our slice. But where do we stop the slice? For each slice, we have to specify a start parameter and a stop parameter if we don't want to use the default values. Let me delete the messages right here, and let's see how we can use the value of i to our advantage to get the value of the stop parameter. We want to get slices of length 2 made with consecutive characters, right? We need to use the value of the start parameter and increment that to get the next value in the string. Let's see what we get if we use i plus 1. I know what you must be thinking, but let's just try this to see how it works. Let's run the code and see the results. What do we get? We get individual characters. We don't get slices of length 2 like we expected. And why is this? Well, this occurs because we are using i plus 1 as the value of the stop parameter. We are incrementing the value of i by 1. And this will not be appropriate. Why? Because we are going to get, for example, when i is 0, the value of i plus 1 is going to be 1. When i is 1, the value of i plus 1 is going to be 2, and so on. But that is not what we need. Remember that the stop parameter is not included in the string. We are starting the string from 0, and then we are ending the string at 1 without including the character at that index. Instead of getting he, we are going to get only h, because the value at index 1 will not be included. It's the value of the stop parameter. This is start and this is stop. This is start and this is stop. Okay? And so on. We are getting this slice from 0 to 1. And then we are getting the slice from 1 to 2. But that is not what we need. Because we are not going to include the characters at these indices. We need to increment the value of the index by 2. So instead of getting a slice from 0 to 1, we are going to get a slice from 0 to 2. We are going to get this, because 2 is not included in the slice, and we will get the slice he. And then we are going to get from 1 to 3. Right here we should increment it by 2, and we are going to get a slice that goes from 1 to 3. From 1 to 3 without including 3, which is el and so on. Let's see this for the next index. We start from index 2 and then we increment that value by 2. So we stop at index 4, from 2 to 4. We go from 2, which is L, this one right here, to the index 4 without including it. So we end up with a slice LL, like this. Okay? Now let's run the code and see how this works. Great, so now we are getting slices of length 2, like we specified initially. We get he, el, ll, lo, and so on. But notice this right here at the bottom. This is another detail that we have to be aware of for this problem. When we reach the end of the string, like right here, when we reach index 11, we are going to print d followed by the exclamation mark like we anticipated. But then we are going to go to index 12 and that is going to give us a little bit of problems right here because we are going to print only one character. Why? Because the range of the slice is going to be out of bounds. It's going to go beyond the valid range of indices. Let's see why. When the value of i is 12, because remember that we are going to generate a sequence that goes from 0 to 12, the value of the stop parameter is going to be 14. But index 14 is not part of the string, so we only get the character, the exclamation mark. 
And how can we solve this? Well, we can, instead of reaching the number 12 in the sequence, we can limit this to the length of the string minus 1. So instead of performing an iteration for the last character of the string, we are going to stop iterating when we reach index 11. So the last index will be 11, the last value of i, and in this case, the loop will stop when we reach this slice, d followed by an exclamation mark. Great, so let's run the code and see how it works. Let's check that we get all the slices that we wanted to get. H E E L L L L O. Right here, I am surrounding these slices with quotation marks so you can see that they include a character, a special character, like a comma or a space right here. O followed by a comma, that is exactly what we needed, comma followed by a space, then a space and a W, W O. O R R L L D and D followed by an exclamation mark. Great, we solved the problem and now we are getting all the slices that we needed for this problem. Remember that you can use for loops and string slicing to write powerful programs. In this case, we are printing slices of length two, but you can do anything you like with string slicing within the for loop and use the value of the loop variable to get that slice, to customize the value of the slice. Great work! Now you know how to combine for loops and string slicing in your Python programs. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos linked right here. I'll see you there!